Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. Jalapeno cheddar bear summer sausage. Bear tends to be a really rich, really heavy meat. Did a few extra things to this, mostly added a few extra herbs. Just to try to lighten it up a little bit, counteract some of that real rich heaviness that bear meat often has. Let's get started. All right, what I have here, pieces of bear meat. And I'm just gonna start by cutting these into pieces that fit well into my grinder. Actually gonna cut them a little small so that they freeze quick. See that pattern of fat right there? Looks to me like this might be from around the ribs. Quite a bit of fat on that. Bear fat's usually not the tastiest of fats, but we got some tricks up our sleeve. Bear has a pretty strong flavor. And it's actually really, really rich feeling and heavy. I think we're gonna need some spices that help lighten it up. Got this bear meat from someone I met not too long ago. They had a whole ton of bear meat in their freezer. So they give me a bunch of meat if I give them back half of what I make. So making some summer sausage for me and uh, this gentleman. And yeah, that's how I got this bear meat. Honestly, the only times I've had bear, this has been bear sausage, bear summer sausage. People don't tend to eat bear just by itself. Like I said, it has a very strong, very rich flavor. And really what bear tastes like has a lot to do with what they've been eating. So you don't really want to eat the garbage dump bears, bears that have been tooling around in the garbage dump. However, when you get a bear that's been eating your apple orchard, bear tastes better and you get the satisfaction of getting back at them for destroying your orchard, because they will do that. Well, I love living where the bears live, but they can be pretty bad neighbors. Well, to be fair, humans tend to be bad neighbors for most wildlife. This, I wonder, that almost looks like a, like a flank steak, just looking at the green. Before I got into making charcuterie, salamis and sausages and all this, kind of known amongst my friends as the guy that smokes a lot of meats. Because I've been getting into the charcuterie and the cured meats. People, if they got something interesting, some people have been giving me meat and trade for the finished product of sausage. And so I've been getting things, you know, I get some elk, venison, got this bear. I recently got some cougar meat that'll be coming up soon. Cougar is almost the exact opposite of bear as far as the meat. Bear meat is really strong flavored, really rich. Cougar meat, which I had never had, it's a lot like pork. It's somewhere between pork and chicken almost. Extremely lean, it's a white meat. Honestly, and like bear has a lot of flavor. Surprise cougar, it's actually very mild flavored. It's probably the most mild flavored game meat I've ever had. But it makes sense. Cats are lean, mean, killing machines, especially the big cats. Whew, this is a big pile of meat. Gonna make quite a few sausages, I think. All right, I'm gonna put this into the freezer. 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Just want it to get partially frozen. Very important when making sausage that everything stay extremely cold. So you can see I got a thin layer of it so that hopefully it will freeze relatively quickly. What I have here is some pork fat and I'm gonna cut it up into pieces that'll fit into my grinder as well. The pork fat, Kind of strange as it sounds, it's actually going to lighten up that bear a little bit. If we used bear fat, this would just taste so gamey, it'd be hard to eat. All right, I'm going to put my pork fat into the freezer as well. Now I'm going to mix up my cure and spices for the summer sausage, starting with some salt. And I'm going to use some cure number one because this will be cold smoking and I don't want to get botulism or give it to anyone else. Botulism needs an anaerobic condition. That's why there's concerns with it when canning. But sausage, once you put this in a casing, it becomes anaerobic. I'm also going to add some dextrose and this is going to feed the starter culture I'm going to mix up. So that culture consumes that sugar. It's going to produce lactic acid. That's going to lower the pH. One of the safety hurdles for this summer sausage. As well as that dextrose, I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar. Dextrose is immediately available for that culture. The sugar has kind of more of a lagging accessibility for the culture. Next, I'm going to add some black pepper, some granulated garlic, some ground coriander, a little bit of allspice, a little bit of nutmeg, 
Now I have a few other things I'm going to add to this to help lighten up that heaviness of the bear meat. I'm going to add some rosemary, some thyme, and some marjoram. Herbs tend to help cut some of the gaminess, just some of the overall richness of that bear meat. I think these will all go well with the jalapeno cheddar I'm going to be using. I'm not sure if this is going to go good, but I'm going to add it. It's a little bit of juniper berries. Juniper berries also will help lighten it. So there's my spices and cure. Set that aside for a minute. I'm going to be using these 61 millimeter beef summer sausage casings. These are very smoke permeable, so the smoke will still get into the meat. And first thing I got to do is tie an end. So what I'm going to do is just make some folds in the end, back and forth, kind of like an accordion style. Going to take my string. Go over, I'm going to go over one more time, over and under, pull that tight. Now I'm going to put one more overhand knot just to hold that one tight. I just left that like that, it would slide right off of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over and make another knot right here. with another simple knot to hold that tight. And that makes this little nub here. That's going to be where the friction all goes to. So this string won't slide off because it's got that little nub. If you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. So just for some extra insurance, I'm going to come back to the other side and put another knot here. It's good to leave more of a tail so that you can tie this back to make a hanging loop. But the friction is going to be caught on that little nub. It's going to keep the meat from pushing that out. It's going to uh, keep your meat in the casing. Pretty important. So I'm going to put some knots in a few more of these, and I'll soak these about a half hour before I want to use them in some warm water. I've had my meat and fat in the freezer. It's below freezing. I've had my grinder parts in the freezer as well. I'm going to grind this twice for the first grind. I'm using my seven millimeter plate and we're just gonna load this up. Hope it all fits in this bowl. So I'm just feeding this as fast as the grinder will take it. I'm not forcing it through with the plunger or anything. All right, it's a pretty full bowl. Still 32 degrees. That'll be just fine for the grinding again. This time I'm gonna run it through my four and a half millimeter plate. It's the smallest one I have. These threads are super sharp on here. Every time I wash this, they seem to get cut. All right. Now I'm going to go straight into my bigger container. Sometimes when I regrind it, I do need to use this plunger to help it get through the throat, but I don't force it through the grinder itself. I just help it get through the throat part. And on the second grind, I'm going to add a couple of whole jalapeno peppers because I want a little bit with the seeds still in it just to add a tiny bit of heat. See it's coming out like spaghetti-like strands. That's because it's nice and cold. Always want to keep everything cold when making sausage. I'm just going to make a ball out of a little bit, pass that back through. That'll push anything off the alger that's bound up on the alger. I will call that good. Just gonna stick this back in the freezer for a couple minutes while I wash up my grinder. If you don't wash this right away, it can get really gummy, be a real pain in the ass. So I'm gonna mix up my starter culture. I'm gonna use FLC today. I'm also gonna use some flavor of Italy starter culture. This is a first for me. I've never mixed two cultures. FLC can be used at low temperatures for a slow and mild acidification or at warmer temperatures 
for a stronger, faster acidification. On the higher end of temperatures for FLC, FLC and Flavor of Italy both like the same, similar temperatures. I'm going to add about three-eighths of a teaspoon, or a really fat quarter of a teaspoon, of each of them. Because FLC, it says to add a quarter teaspoon for every 10 pounds. And flavor of Italy, well, kind of leaves you on your own to guess how it needs. It doesn't say what temperature, doesn't say anything. I'm going to wake these cultures up with about a, just under a half cup of water. I have nice clean well water here. If you're on a municipal system where they chlorinate the water, you definitely want to go with some distilled water. If you have any question about your water, just use distilled water. I'm going to set that aside for about 15 minutes, and I'll be right back. Before I mix this up, I want to check the temperature, make sure it's still nice and cold. Mine is 33 degrees. Anything below 34 or 35 would be good, but just want to make sure it's nice and cold for the mixing. I'm going to take my spice and curry mixed up. Spread it out here pretty evenly-ish. I'm going to take some mustard seeds. That's the one spice I didn't add in because I just want whole seeds. I like the little pop it gives you. I'm going to take my starter culture. Spread it on here pretty evenly-ish. I'm going to take my non-fat dry milk. Binders aren't 100% necessary, but they do give the fat and the water I'm about to add something to bind to. It will help increase your odds of getting a really good finished product. Now I'm going to start mixing. I always like to wear cotton liners under my gloves, partly because this meat's really cold and it would hurt my hands, but mostly because this meat and fat is really cold and I want it to stay that way. I don't want to uh, warm up this batter. Mixing is kind of a matter of flipping it around, kneading it, squeezing it in your hands. It's whatever you got to do to get this all incorporated evenly. It's probably going to take about 10 minutes. With the batch this big, it can be a little bit of a workout. This batch is actually maybe worthy of a real mixer, but I don't have one. Most of the batches I make are much smaller than this, usually one or two kilos. Not six and a half kilos like this is, but it's all right. Probably take about 10 minutes by hand. Probably take a lot less than that with a mechanical mixer. If you're doing a small batch, you could just use a stand mixer like a KitchenAid with a paddle. Works pretty good too. You can see it is starting to come together. It's not ready yet, but I just want to show you how it starts to get strands pulling off of here. That's the myosin and actin starting to reach out and it gets sticky. That myosin and actin wants to grab onto anything it touches. And that's what they mean by protein extraction. When you hear people talk about protein extraction, that's what it is. I've been going at this for about five minutes now. So this is getting pretty sticky. It's starting to kind of pull my gloves a little bit. This is the perfect time to add my jalapenos. And I've had these in the freezer. Again, can't stress enough. You want to keep everything cold. Everything you add should be cold. Cold, cold, cold. And I'm going to add my cheddar cheese. I'm using high temp cheese, mostly because I have it. It's already cubed up and it's easy. But you really don't need to use high temp cheese for a summer sausage. Sausage you're going to eat hot, maybe. You still don't really need it, need it. Check out some of my other videos. I've got some jalapeno cheddar summer sausages using regular cheese. And when I cut into it, it's a nice, clean, beautifully studded sausage. There's no melt of the cheese. That said, if you're making a sausage you're going to cook in a pan or on the grill, you're going to eat hot. There sometimes will be a small amount of meltage from the cheese if you don't use the high temp cheese. Check out my video. Is it necessary to use high temp cheese? Kind of did a side by side and get the idea. This is looking pretty evenly mixed. It's lifting up this whole pan, sticking to my hand. It's kind of trying to pull my gloves off. If you get an up close look, you can kind of see some strands reaching out. This is good to go. Got my sausage stuffer. And I'm just going to load it up a handful at a time. And I'm going to push out the air with each handful. Air is really about the second worst thing for a sausage. The worst thing for a sausage is heat. 
want it to be cold every step of the way. Now, if you're using a stuffer attached to your meat grinder or attached to your KitchenAid, you should buy a dedicated one like this. They're not that expensive. But if you're not going to buy a dedicated sausage stuffer like this and you are using a meat grinder or KitchenAid attachment, you should rechill your meat because the friction in those creates a lot of heat and can smear your fat. That being said, it's important to work pretty fast once you've added a binder to your batter. And rechilling it takes time. And it'll probably thicken up and it'll become maybe harder to stuff. On top of the fact that you're using less than ideal way to stuff it. So my real advice, if you want to up your sausage game, get a dedicated sausage stuffer. It's really the best thing you can do to up your sausage making game. Just going to push this meat to the end of the horn. And grab one of these casings that's been soaking in warm water. We only need about a half hour or so. Won't hurt them if they go longer. Before we put the casing on, I always lube up the horn, some water. Going to poke a couple holes just in case there's some air in there. And then we're going to stuff it as tight as we can. Now you don't need to leave this much extra, but make sure you leave enough extra to make a knot like I did here. So that you can tie it over, fold it, get that nub. You don't want your string coming off and dropping your meat on the floor of your smoker or your drying chamber. All right, bunch of summer sausages here. So what I'm gonna do with these, I'm just gonna twist them up really tight. Once they're tight, I'll go a couple more twists. And then I'm gonna hold that with one hand and I'm gonna tie the same knot as I did on the other side. Once I got that knot, I can let go of the casing, tie another knot to hold it tight. And then I'm gonna fold that over and make the other knot just like I did on the other side. Except on this side, I made sure to leave a long enough tail so I can make a place to hang it from. Just like that. And now you can see when I hang it, it's going to have this friction point and won't let it slip off the end. Now that I got these all tied up, I'm going to take my sausage pricker, going to heat it, hit it with a little bit of heat. And I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. Once it's cooled down, I'm just going to go through and put some holes all up and down these. Don't let any air out that's in there. As the meat dries, it would leave air stuck between the meat and the casing. I'm just going to let that air out and help the casing stick. Take my little ball left from the stuffer and I'm just going to wrap it up in plastic. I'm going to set that down on my tray here. Now I'm just going to take some plastic and cover this up. The humidity of these sausages needs to be around 90% or better in order for the ferment to work properly. So I'm just going to cover this whole tray up. We believe that should keep it at least 90% humidity in there. I'm going to leave this on my counter, which is 75 degrees. It's kind of the cooler side of things for, as far as I can tell, for the flavor of Italy. And it's a slower cooler ferment also for the uh, for the FLC. For a fast ferment, it says to go between 95 and 115. Now over 95 is a little warm for the uh, flavor of Italy. So I'm gonna leave this on my counter at about 75 degrees overnight, check the pH, and in the morning, I'll probably stick it in my oven with the light on, which does shoot it up to around 95. And the reason I'm doing that is I want these to take roughly 36 hours. I think if I just did it at 95 degrees, it would happen real fast. And I don't have time tomorrow to smoke these. I want to smoke these the day after tomorrow. So I'll check the pH in the morning. Kind of don't know what's going to happen. Never use two different starter cultures at the same time. Not always the best to experiment on a 15 pound batch, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work out just great. After 12 hours on my counter, about 75 degrees, pH had really not dropped very much. So I put it in my oven with the light on and I can feel this is definitely 
the, the texture of fermented meat. It's got the smell, that salami-like smell. So I'd like this to be 4.7, maybe 4.8. I think I might have left it a little too long. Okay, 4.7, 4.71. It's okay. Yeah, it's 4.68. We'll live with it. I think it'll be good. So the lower the pH, the tangier this is going to be. I'm going to hang these at room temperature, let them dry a little bit, and then I will smoke them. A little bright to get a good picture. Pretty sunny today. But uh, anyway, after these have been hanging for about a couple hours, room temperature, they're a little drier. Got them in my smoker. I'm using a little bit of alder wood today. At least I'm going to start with that because it's easy to keep it nice and cool. Trying to keep my smoker temperature between 100 and 120 for the first couple hours. Then I'll raise it up to 140 or so. So yeah, we'll check back in a little while. I'm about five hours in, and I'm going to take a peek so I can show you, because I think it'll be dark out by the time this is done. But yeah, we're getting some pretty nice color on that. Getting some nice color. So yeah, I think these got another, probably about two more hours or so. I'm going to close this up, try to keep some of that heat. These are straight out of the smoker. I'm really liking the color on them. And... Going to put them into an ice water bath. I don't know how much it's going to take to uh, overfill this container. Uh oh. I think some of these might be too long. Uh oh. Some of these might be too long. They got to go at an angle. They okay, got to do the longest ones first. Huh. This is going to be a problem. All right. I got a solution to this problem. First, let's get these in here. Hold on. Be right back. Damn, this one won't fit in either. Maybe we just help it out by pouring some cold water over it. Some of this other one. This one I'm just gonna have to kind of put back and forth. Maybe I'll switch it out. Gonna leave these soaking in this ice bath for about 10 minutes. I figured out how to make these all fit. Now we got them all, all seven of them soaking in some ice water. That's going to stop their cooking right away, keep them from carryover cooking. It'll help bind that, uh, help bind the casing to them. Yeah, these are looking really good. All right, I got these salamis hanging. Could just put them on a rack. I didn't have a rack big enough to hold these all. It just seemed easier for me to hang them. But I got a towel out here to collect the drips because as you can see right now, they're pretty wet. They're dripping a little bit which is a good reason to just put them on a rack. But anyway, got a towel out collecting the drips and uh, just gonna let them hang for a few hours. I'm actually gonna get a little rest and I'll put these in my chamber in a few hours. Well, these have been hanging overnight. Well, I'm just gonna weigh them up so I'll know when they've lost 15% of their weight, which will correlate to about 15% of their moisture. So yeah, I'm gonna put them on the scale and then put them in my drying cabinet. After smoking my bear summer sausage, I hung it up in here. This is my drying chamber. It stays about 55 degrees and about 80% humidity. And I just wanted them to lose about 15% of their weight. I honestly left it a few days longer than I needed to. They're closer to 18%. But uh, let's take one out and give it a taste. Well, I'm liking how that's looking. Started with cheese. I see a couple of mustard seeds hiding in there. Piece or two of jalapeno. Smells really good. Was a little worried because this pH did get lower than I intended for it to. And it spent an extra couple days drying. Got just a little drier than what I was shooting for. Closer to 18% rather than the 15% I was going for. But this is really tasty. You know, the herbs do a really good job of balancing out the richness of the meat. And I think that low pH helps with that too. Just the acidity, you know, when cooking, acid kind of can counteract a really heaviness. I feel like the acidity of this sausage really helps balance out some of that richness of the bear meat. It's not coming out overly herbal, which, you know, I did put a fair amount of herbs in there. 
I think that's just helping to counteract that heavy richness of bear meat. I love the little pop you get when you get the whole mustard seeds, creaminess from the cheese. Kind of surprised the jalapeno is not coming through a little more. I mean, I added, look at my book. I added 7% jalapeno, you know, which is same as I did in my venison one. I only added 6% to the pork and beef one, 5% to my all beef one. And I kind of think the all beef one had the most jalapeno flavor with 5%. I'm not sure why. If I was going to make this again, I might add even more jalapenos. Some people use the dried jalapenos, and that does concentrate the jalapeno flavor. However, I like having the little pieces of jalapeno in here. Maybe a combination of fresh and dried would be the way to go. Might be worth trying. I really like having little studded pieces of jalapeno. And it's in there. I can taste it. It's just not as forward as I was expecting or maybe would have liked it to be. It's definitely in there, though. I would say for bear summer sausage, I'm really liking this. Good amount of smoke, good amount of flavor. The bear is not overwhelming, which bear often can be. Bear is a really rich, heavy meat. It can be overwhelming, can be overpowering. That's why I added so many herbs. And this is really clean tasting. It's a really clean taste for a bear meat. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. I don't know if that's the animal itself. It definitely wasn't a bear that was out eating trash. Might have been one in someone's fruit orchard. Yeah, all in all, I'm really, really happy with this. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. If you're still watching this video and you're not subscribed to my channel, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. I've got other content you'd probably enjoy. If you want to support the work I'm doing, drop me a super thanks. I would be very thankful. And uh, whatever you do, put some love into the food you're making. Peace.